Hi, my name is Ishita Sengupta and like everyone else, I watched a lot of movies at Mami this time and I thought it would be fun to share my top 5 picks from the festival. Number 5 on my list is Savnik Kaur's Against the Tide. It's an ecological fable told through the polity of human relationship. She focuses on the Kohlis, the indigenous fisher folks of Maharashtra and foregrounds the tribulations they have to suffer in a profession that is no longer sustainable. In her documentary, Kaur focuses on climate change, but she also insists that for people in this community, the fight for survival is so much that the need for conservation takes a backseat, and that is the biggest tragedy. But what makes Against the Tide such a humanist piece of work is that at its core, it's telling a friendship of two men who have grown up with different ideologies but remain tied for their love of the sea. My fourth pick from the festival is this terrific Arabic language documentary called The Four Daughters by Kothar Ben Hanya. The premise is simply this, when two daughters of a Tunisian mother disappear and join IS in Libya, the filmmaker brings professional actors to recreate the past. What eventually happens during the runtime though, is that what was supposed to give them closure opens up old wounds. But what I found fascinating about the documentary is the way it challenges the limits of the genre of non-fiction itself, lets life lead into it, and finally, the way, you know, the word of loss, the theme of loss, which runs throughout the work, assumes different meanings. Therefore, at the starting point, the documentary is simply about the loss of two women. By the time it concludes, it becomes the loss of a woman who never had a functional relationship with her husband, the loss of two sisters who never had a childhood and eventually the loss of women who don't know how to lead their lives because it was never given to them in the first place. My third pick from the festival is Anand Patwardhan's The World is Family where he chronicles his aging parents for over three decades and juxtaposes them with India's freedom struggle. Patwardhan's uncles were involved in the freedom fight and his mother his family belonged to Hyderabad, which is present-day Pakistan. For those who are aware of the non-fiction landscape in India, Patwardhan is a name that stands out. He has been a trailblazer and a custodian of free speech for decades now. But this is his most personal work. Unsurprisingly, he goes back to where he always starts from. There is a lot of what is happening in the country right now. He comes as late as 2019 with the anti-CA protest. But as a writer who writes about her family a lot, what stood out in the documentary is the way Patwardhan put her finger on why we write about the people we love. Throughout the documentary, Patwardhan records his parents as they grow older. There is something moving about the way he does it, and you realize it later. He does it because the camera at once becomes his tool to record them in posterity and a shield to protect him from the agony of watching the people he loves the most age before his eyes. It makes him a bystander in a story where he's one of the protagonists. My second pick from the festival is Anatomy of a Fall, one of the buzziest titles of the festival. I mean, it won the Palme d'Or at Cannes this year. The Justin Trier film revolves around a writer called Sandra Hoyter, played by Sandra Huller, whose husband dies tragically after falling from the third floor of an isolated chalet in France. On paper, it's a pretty straightforward premise. Look at the specifics. There are two writers who are married. In a pretty turbulent marriage, one of them is more successful than the other. The one who is less successful dies. At the time of the event, the only witness is the 11-year-old son who has visual impairment. But what the filmmaker does with this fairly simple, if I may say so, quote from drama, is that she uses it to make fascinating insights about gender politics, the fragile facets of relationship, and finally, the vulnerability and the vindictiveness of writers. And honestly, as a huge Marriage Story fan, I must admit that Justine does a Marriage Story better than the film itself because she knows that the best ones end in death. My top pick from the festival is Monster by Japanese master Hirokazu Kurita. Here's the story. A mother finds something is wrong with her adolescent son after he starts behaving strangely. She soon realizes that he is being bullied at school by a school teacher. Corrida takes this and runs with it, crafting a soul-crushing story of friendship, togetherness and love. 
It is always a delight to see old filmmakers upgrade themselves to keep up with the time and refine their craft to retain relevancy. For me, watching Monster was witnessing Kurida trying to say that he knows what's happening. He knows the story still. It's a fascinating film which broke me into pieces by the time it concluded. What he does in this film is that he tells one story from three different perspectives. Such narrative design is often used to give a gratifying result at the end of a thriller. But what Kurida does is he uses it to arrive at a definitive conclusion where he says, we are who we love and we will always be who we love. These were my top five picks from the festival. But well, what do I know? I spent the last week surviving on three hours sleep. And at this moment, all of it is a blur. But I hope you had a great time attending the festival and watching the video. Thank you.